Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, so we are back. Now, uh, Victor asked a great question during the break. No one's ever asked me this question before, and it's so cool. So I, I get disturbingly excited by y'all's questions because especially by the time we get to mastering server tuning, y'all get to ask really hard questions and it's really genuinely fun. Um, Victor says, Brent, do you have a method to realize that a query cannot run any faster? After I've added indexes, I've got enough memory and CPUs like to prove that a query won't go any faster due to the amount of data the query returns or something like that. I've seen queries pull large result sets, two, three gigs worth of data, and they want it to run faster, but I sometimes feel like you're downloading a file from the web you're limited to by the network. Oh, there are like half a dozen good questions into here. One of the questions is, do I have generally a rule for or what do I do when someone says, could you make the query faster? What I'll try to do is I'll say, I'll make a compromise of if I did this to the query, here's how it would run faster. And a classic example of that is related to your query. One is to just change it to select one just go get me the number one or like hi mom or something like that instead of bringing back all of the columns just bring back like the number one this has all kinds of interesting effects on the way the query works because suddenly you may be able to use indexes that you weren't able to before plus network io drops dramatically if we're just streaming the number one down very quickly Another thing that I've done is I've said, I'm just going to get a count of the results instead of all of the individual rows, get count star. And what you can do is you can wrap the whole, put the whole query, because your query probably has things like group by and order by that wouldn't work if you switch to count star. No problem, put the big giant query in a CTE and then say with that query, return count star. And that's the only thing that you return. That helps users understand how much faster it is to just return one row. Same thing with like top 100. Another thing that I've done is I've said, instead of putting the data across the network, dump it to a temp table take the output of the query and write it all directly to tempdb. This lets you break the query into two phases. One is building the query's results, but then you don't have to wait on the network at all. You're just dumping it straight into tempdb. You're not holding up for their network part. This will show them how much of the query's runtime is dedicated to building the results. Then to show them how long it takes to pull the data down, you simply do a select from the temp table, have them in their application, go do a select star from this temp table, and it can be a real table if you want, uh, to pull the data down. And then they'll see, even when the query isn't having to do any work, all I'm doing is feeding you that data. That's how long it takes your application to consume that data. So that's how you start to break it up, break the problem up into pieces. Try selecting less columns, less rows, no rows by dumping it into TempDB, and then all the rows but without query execution. So dumping the stuff into TempDB and then having them consume the TempDB results as a separate call just so that they can see how slow their application is at pulling down their results. Hopefully that helps it. I love that question so much just because I've had to do that several times as a consultant and I never actually thought about that out loud as a here's what my process is. And now that I've said it, I am totally going to blog about that. Actually, I'm probably not even going to blog. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go hit pause over here on the stream deck, which is going to trigger it to start a new recording. So then I can just publish this up on YouTube and whatnot. So three, two, one, pause.